Hello and welcome. I am Madhuri and today we are going to talk about post graduation in engineering. You have chosen to watch this video so I am assuming that you are pretty clear about doing masters in engineering and want to understand more details about courses like MTech, ME and MS to explore what is best suited for you. If that's not the case and if you are still in the process of deciding whether to pursue masters, MBA or MS, I would strongly recommend that you watch the previous two videos wherein we have covered these questions. You can check them out by clicking on the link here or the ones mentioned in the description box. In this video, we will dissect details about MTech, ME and MS. I will not be telling you which one is better but instead, I will help you understand the factors that you need to consider to make your choice. By the end of this video, you will hopefully have a good basis for comparison to choose the right track for yourself. Let's get started. going for technical degrees for your post graduation, you have the option of choosing among MTech that's Master of Technology, ME which is Master of Engineering and MS that's Master of Science. Let's do a point by point analysis to understand more about these courses and about the factors that you should consider for making your choice. The first factor is your choice of country. While MTech and ME are India specific titles, MS is a more global title. To decide about where you want to study in the world, ask yourself these questions. Where would you like to settle down eventually? Which company or companies do you want to work for and where are they situated in the world? What course specialization you are interested in? And finally, which universities provide those specializations for you to enroll in those courses? If you are not clear on the university or your choice of specialization, that becomes our second factor. MTech degrees are provided by IITs, Bits Pilani and some NITs as well. Whereas ME degree, which is Master of Engineering, can be completed in most colleges in India. Talking about the MS degree, it is provided by countries such as USA, Germany, Singapore and these are only the few universities that have remained famous among students. Having said that, how do you enroll into these institutes? That becomes our third factor, the qualifying exam. For institutes in India, you will have to appear for GATE, which is Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering conducted by the Indian Institutes of Technology. Some colleges in Singapore and Germany also consider GATE as a valid entry for their admissions. For all the other institutes abroad, you will have to appear for GRE, which is Graduate Record Examination conducted by a global council called ETS. If you have to choose about your degree course based on this factor, you will have to understand the specifics of these exams and the concepts tested on each. For GATE, the multiple choice questions are based on all of your engineering subjects that you studied for in undergraduation plus quantitative questions about algebra, stats, etc. and verbal questions. There is negative marking for all of the questions on the GATE exam and the score is valid for 3 years. For GRE, the questions are not based on engineering but are a combination of quant, verbal and two essay questions for which you have to provide critical analysis of an issue and an argument. There is no negative marking and the score is valid for five years. Between the two exams, GATE is very engineering and quant heavy whereas GRE is very verbal heavy. Based on your area of strength, you can analyze which exam would be better suited for you. That is of course considering that you are open to studying in any country. For GATE preparation, People usually take 6 to 8 months going up to 4 years to study all the 8 to 9 subjects from the engineering days and the multiple reference books as highlighted by the exam conducting IITs. GRE on the other hand requires 3 to 4 months of preparation given the major concepts that are tested are quant and verbal. Even the question types and syllabus are fixed so GRE is easier to prepare for. Once you have given the respective qualifying exams the next step is that of admission. So that's the fourth factor that you need to consider. How easy is it to get admissions into these institutes that provide MTech, ME and MS degree courses? For MTech, your score is automatically submitted to all the IITs. But for other institutes that provide the ME degree, you have to submit separate application forms. The ratio of number of applicants to total available seats is quite high for MTech and ME meaning there are way more applicants applying than the number of seats available. 
In addition, most Indian colleges will have reservation quota. So the qualifying marks will differ based on the caste that you belong to. So admissions are a tough game when it comes to MTech and ME. For MS, although the number of applicants to the seat ratio is quite high, there is no reservation quota, but the admission process for MS is a different game altogether. It is quite a lengthy process, so I've done a separate video on the same. You can access it by clicking on the link here or the one mentioned in the description box. The final factor to consider for your post-graduation in engineering is return on investment. Let's first understand about the investments that we'll be making and then we'll look at the returns. Investments can be classified into two categories, monetary and non-monetary. For MTech and ME, the monetary investments include the gate exam fee ranging from 700 rupees to 7000 rupees based on your caste, gender and nationality, coaching fees of about 55000 rupees if you enroll for it, application fees for colleges apart from the IITs, and admission fees plus living expenses such as food, hostel, books, etc. ranging from 20000 to 4 lakh rupees based on the university that you enroll in. Looking at the returns for this monetary investment, internships are a tough arena in India, but most students who find a spot get an average salary of 25,000 to 50,000 rupees per month as an MTech or ME intern. Next, institutes provide a stipend of about 12,500 rupees for lab projects and assistantships. Coming on to the job factor, it's again a little difficult area in India because MTech and ME graduates compete with lakhs of engineering students to land a decent job. Nonetheless, the average salary of an MTech or ME graduate in India is approximately 10.5 lakhs per annum. For MS, the monetary investments include GRE exam fee of 14,000 rupees, coaching fees of 25,000 if you enroll for it, TOEFL and IELTS exam, which is again about 13,000 rupees, admission process fees of approximately 14,000 per college, and that again includes a lot of details, so I've mentioned the specifics in the MS in USA video. And the final one is college fees of approximately 30 lakhs, unless you are in a funded program wherein the tuition fees will be brought down by quite a lot. Looking at the returns for this monetary investment, most MS students get an internship opportunity, especially if the course is of 16 months or more. The average income of an MS intern is approximately 5 lakh rupees per month. Quite a few MS students also become teaching assistants to professors and get an income of approximately 7,000 rupees per week. For final post-graduation jobs, there are no specific campus placements, but universities do arrange for career fairs. And the average salary of an MS graduate is approximately 77 lakhs per annum. All the courses MTech, ME and MS have an equivalent return as per their respective investment. These financial aspects will greatly help in your decision-making process. Talking about the non-monetary investments for MTech and ME, first up is the time to prepare for GATE, that is 6 to 8 months to up to 4 years. Next is the duration of the course, which is usually 2 years in India. Returns for this time investment include a master's degree to your name, additional knowledge compared to undergraduates, and a network of like-minded people interested in the same topics as you. All of this will together enhance your quality of life. For MS, the non-monetary investments include gate exam prep time of 3 to 4 months, course duration of about 1 to 2 years, and the emotional willpower of staying away from family for a long period of time. And the returns for these are global exposure to opportunities and culture leading to well-rounded development, connections with people in the country of your MS, and thus a global network of people to assist with your personal and professional aspirations. Finally, some sense of independence as well, especially if you are studying in a university outside of your country of residence. So the five factors that you need to consider for your post-graduation in engineering, be it MTech, ME or MS are your choice of country and university, the course specialization that you are interested in, qualifying exams, GATE or GRE, ease of admission and return on investment, both monetary and non-monetary. With this, I hope you now have a base to get started with your decision process. Whichever course you finalize, remember to follow your dream and choose what is best for you. Do share your decision-making process and how this video helped you in the comment section. 
or on Instagram and LinkedIn for which I have also mentioned the links in the description box. Please like, share and subscribe to support the channel so that I can continue creating more videos for your benefit. You can also click on the bell icon right next to the subscribe button to get a notification when a new video is published every Sunday. I am Madhuri wishing you all the very best for your post graduation in engineering. Thank you for watching.